911, what's the address of your emergency? Hi, 1313 Esther Drive, Boulder City, Nevada. Okay, and what phone number are you calling from? 259-8979. And what's the problem? Tell me exactly what happened. Uh, my name is Hans Walters. Mm -hmm. uh, I work for Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department. Uh, I just shot and killed my son, Max, and my wife, Michelle. And I killed her because she's in such chronic pain from her neck and back and on more medicines and she's not going to survive. And we were both seeing a uh, therapist and a psychologist in Boulder City. His name is Jay Summers. And uh, I feel terrible for doing it. Okay, I and you... Okay, voice out. Please don't, please don't interrupt me, please. Okay. Uh, I, I've also set the house on fire, and if the fire department comes to my house, because there's a fire hydrant right in front of my house, uh, I'm going to open fire on them. So I have to wait till the house is burning, and then I'm going to shoot myself. Okay. So okay, I don't sir? I don't ask me any questions. This is this is real. This isn't a joke. The fire alarms in the background is because I set the garage and the bedroom on fire. My wife's in the bedroom. I shot her in the head. My son, unfortunately, is in the living room watching Oswald, and I shot him in the head, too. And, uh, oh, forgive me for my sins. Please don't call back. Thank you. On January 21st, 2013, a man calmly called 911 to report that he had shot and killed his son and his wife at their home in Boulder City, Nevada. He explained that he had put his wife out of her misery due to her chronic neck and back pain, ongoing medical issues, and dependency on medication. After expressing remorse, he went on to inform the operator that he had set fire to the house and warned that he would open fire on any firefighters responding to the scene. He then revealed his intention to shoot himself once the house was engulfed in flames. Throughout the call, he spoke with an eerily calm demeanor and fire alarms can be heard in the background. At one point, he politely requested the operator not to interrupt him. He abruptly ended the call with the words, please forgive me for my sins. Overall, his tone was so composed that if you didn't know the context, it could have sounded like he was ordering a pizza. Unfortunately, the reality was far more grim. The caller was Hans Peter Walters, a lieutenant with the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department aged 52. His wife was 46-year-old Catherine Michelle Walters, who preferred to be called by her middle name, and their son Maximilian, known as Max, was the miracle Michelle had given birth to five years ago after many years of fertility treatments. By all accounts, the Walters family were very private and kept to themselves. In fact, a number of their neighbours weren't even aware they had a child until this tragedy unfolded. Not only was Hans Walters a respected officer who had served for 22 years, and reached the rank of lieutenant in 2010, but Michelle had also worked for the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department before leaving the force in 2005. She'd served with distinction and compassion, having received several awards during her time as a police officer, including a life-saving award and a community service award. While she was known as Michelle to her friends, she had also spent over a decade being affectionately known as Wonder Woman to those she met while volunteering for child cancer groups and summer camps for critically ill children. To the countless children she assisted, Michelle was popular for her authenticity and heartfelt connection to others. Jeff Gordon, the CEO of the Nevada Childhood Cancer Foundation, reflects on his time knowing her in the following way. Michelle possessed an extraordinary ability to uplift others just by being herself. Her genuine love and concern were palpable to the children she interacted with. She radiated warmth and empathy, filling not only the children's hearts, but those of everyone around her. Having dedicated approximately 15 years to volunteering with child cancer organizations, Michelle had sacrificed much of her personal leisure time to oversee Las Vegas summer camps, Camp Cartwheel and Camp Firefly, events aimed at brightening up the lives of critically ill children and their siblings. Embracing her alter ego, Michelle was always in high spirits, wearing a Wonder Woman costume at the camps. Her husband even supported her at some of these events behind the scenes, and he was known as Bill the Cat. Undoubtedly, 
the most profound transformation in Michelle's life occurred with the birth of Max in February 2007. It was her dream of becoming a mum that led her to leave the police department two years earlier. And after a challenging journey filled with years of wishing, hoping, and the roller coaster that came with never ending fertility treatments, Michelle was so incredibly excited to finally have the chance to become a mother. Being a mom was the one thing she had wanted more than anything else in the world, and raising Max was an experience she described as one of the proudest accomplishments of her life. After he was born, he was her top priority above all else, and her entire life was focused on him. They shared such a deep bond, and friends have referred to him as her shining light. Another of Michelle's passions was running. She is said to have been a marathon runner for many years until she was forced to stop competing after it began taking a toll on her body. She was forced to have surgery for her severe back pain and her body began breaking down on her to the point where pain medication was no longer doing its job. Both Michelle and Max had things to look forward to at the time of their death. Michelle was scheduled to have another round of surgeries to improve her quality of life and Max was about to celebrate his sixth birthday in the coming weeks. After receiving the call from Walters, emergency services soon converged on the family home at 1313 Esther Drive in Boulder City, Nevada, where he was waiting for them. The SWAT team arrived to find him standing outside the house with what appeared to be a handgun. They requested that he drop the weapon, and he wasn't prepared to cooperate. Agitated and unresponsive, he ignored all of their commands then headed inside his blazing home. It is believed that this is when he fulfilled his threats by fatally turning the gun on himself. The fire quickly tore through the house, and once it had been extinguished, the bodies of Hans Michel and Max Walters were recovered. They had all been killed by gunshot wounds to the head from Walters' Glock pistol. Michel had been shot through the eye, and Max's wound was in the back of his head. Walters had shot himself above his right ear, the shocking news of the shooting rippled through the community, leaving friends, neighbours and colleagues stunned and bewildered. Even years later, the motive behind the act remained a baffling mystery. Some witnesses and neighbours were unable to reconcile the Hans Walters they knew with the man who committed these heinous acts. Investigations led by Henderson Police included interviews with family and friends, uncovering that Hans had been struggling with Michelle's chronic pain and suspected medication abuse. A friend of Michelle recalled Hans alluding to his struggles with his wife's condition. Meanwhile, Michelle's brother, Greg Watkins, reported that Walters had said, I don't know that I can deal with this. You know, keep taking care of her. It's getting really hard. This tragic incident brought with it an outpouring of both grief and outrage among law enforcement. One former officer expressed that his prior positive memories with Walters have lost all significance, a sentiment echoed by many present members of the force. Some openly disowned the respected man they once knew on social media and the like, while others, who found nothing amiss just days before the act, were left with a perplexing and tormenting question. Why? As we reflect on the tragic events that unfolded, all that remains are pieces of a complex puzzle leading to speculation about the factors that may have contributed to the decline of Hans Walter's mental health. Neighbours described Michelle's struggles with depression and back issues, possibly affecting her ability to care for their son, Max, while Hans was about to face the challenges of a graveyard shift. Financial stress was evident, as Michelle had left the Las Vegas Police Department a few years earlier, making them a single-income family with increasing medical bills and substantial costs from their in vitro fertilization journey. Odd behavior, like giving away personal items just a week before the incident, was also noted by co-workers. Friends and family painted a picture of a couple that seemed good together, with no indications of violence or abuse, yet they remained somewhat isolated in their community, such as the various neighbors who lived close to them for years and yet had no idea they even had a son. The director of a police support program warned against simply blaming the pressures of policing for this incident, emphasising that mental health support within the police force has improved over time, reflecting a broad spectrum of responses to stress. Although it can't be ignored that, in a tragic statistic, law enforcement officers have a 54% increase in suicide risk 
when compared to their civilian counterparts. When speaking on the Walters family tragedy, a noted criminology expert highlighted the concept of a catastrophic trigger event as a common cause of most murder-suicides. These triggers could involve financial, domestic or job-related struggles, and the actions are often premeditated rather than impulsive fits of rage. There are some men who simply can't stand the idea of being separated from their families. There's also the idea that some men feel totally responsible for the well-being of their family members, and they feel that life is so miserable they would all be better off dead. Such tragic incidents are often surrounded by complexities and secrecy, and the truth is that the real reason may never come to light. When it's all said and done, is there really any reason that we could hear of that would make this situation feel less heart-wrenching? The four-bedroom Walters family home that once stood at 1313 Esther Drive in Boulder City, Nevada had been left in disrepair with a damaged roof, becoming an eyesore and painful reminder of the atrocities that were committed there. While neighbours complained about the unsettling odour and debris, legal disputes over ownership in probate court prevented any immediate action, but eventually a permit was granted to the administrator acting on behalf of the Walters estate for the house to be demolished. Coincidentally, the permit finally came through on the one-year anniversary of Michelle and Max's death. The story of the Walters family serves as a sombre reminder that appearances can be deceiving and even the people who seem to have it all together may harbour inner demons. No true crime case is easy to hear, but they are important to tell. Michelle and Max deserve to have their story told, and my thoughts go out to the people they left behind, as well as anyone affected by these events.